still. Um, business schools come in every day to share about their programs with us. We also have admission experts weighing in on your profiles. And finally, we end the day with current students uh, chiming in about their MBA experience. Join me in welcoming Kristen from Yale School of Management. Uh, Kristen, why don't you go ahead and take it on? Great, thank you, Shovik, and hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kristen Mercury, and I serve as Deputy Director of Admissions at the Yale School of Management. Thank you so much for joining our session today. I would love to get a sense of where you're joining me from. Um, so if you don't mind using the chat feature here in StreamYard to share your location, that would be great. I do hope that you and yours are all well um, during this unprecedented time. And I hope you're finding ways to remain productive and connected in a uh, highly virtual world. Okay. So, so as you as you chat in your location, I'm actually not seeing them now, so maybe they're on YouTube. But um, again, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm going to make an assumption uh, about members of the. Oh, I see. There they come. North Carolina, Mexico City, great, thank you. Thanks for joining. Um, considering you're looking at an MBA and considering you've elected to join us for the Yale SOM session, hello from South Africa. Uh, I'm gonna guess that this very diverse audience has a few things in common, including the notion that you're looking for change, maybe even transformation. Maybe you're looking to expand your leadership capacity, um, expand your leadership opportunities. Maybe you are looking for a career pivot or maybe to change the trajectory of your career. I'm guessing you ultimately uh, want to have greater impact on people, on organizations, and even society. And I say this um, because this is a common thread among the students who ultimately choose to apply to the Yale School of Management. Let's start my PowerPoint here. Hopefully you can see that. Our mission to educate leaders for business and society resonates. Um, this desire to have for change and to have greater impact. Um, the mission means that our aim is to develop leaders who think broadly about complex issues. Um, whether those issues uh, are across sectors, are in healthcare, education, finance, public health. Um, we train leaders to have the ability to be decision makers in environments where there are multiple stakeholders, influencers, and consequences of those decisions. And I believe the mission has never been uh, more relevant. Many of you will want to know what makes Yale SOM distinctive among other top MBA programs. So what I've decided to do for you today in this brief presentation is to um, walk you through three aspects of our program that are unique to Yale SOM. I will then briefly uh, cover a little bit about our community and the application, and we'll certainly open to answer any of your questions. On this slide, you'll see three aspects of our curriculum that are very much in support of our mission and, again, unique to Yale. Um, the first is our integration with our home institution, Yale University. Uh, the second aspect, which I'll cover, is our approach to providing our students with global perspective and exposure. And the third is how we train candidates to uh, be elevated leaders for all sectors and all regions of the world. So first, the integration with Yale University. When you come to the Yale School of Management, you come to Yale University. And our MBA program strategically creates numerous opportunities for engagement across campus, giving you access to the sharpest minds in academia, as well as a world-renowned uh, institution and all the resources that go along with that. Um, I think one of the easiest examples to draw out is the second year of our curriculum is all electives. And those electives can be taken anywhere at Yale University. They don't need to be cross-listed courses or have any connection to the school management at all. Um, you could pick up classes in language, the arts, law, 
medicine, public health, et cetera. So this gives you an opportunity to really customize your curriculum, your experience, and expand your network, again, across um, the Yale community. Another example of integration uh, is the opportunity to be a joint degree student. We do have 10 formal joint degree programs between the School of Management and other schools at Yale. And I believe this is true, that the Yale SOM MBA program is comprised of the most joint degree students of any other MBA program in the world. So year after year, somewhere about 15% of our MBA students are joint degree students, um, whether that's you or whether that's someone sitting next to you in a class um, going deep in another field of study or area of expertise. We really value that integration and the doors that are opened uh, and the experiences that, that become much broader for you during your MBA program. So the global piece, um, most all schools teach global business and some have even developed a partnership with the school overseas. But the students at Yale SOM have a very unique and expansive group of opportunities to gain global perspective and understanding, not only with what transpires in the classroom, but what our students, the opportunities our students have to engage with the world uh, more broadly. The main driver of these global engagements is our initiation of the Global Network for Advanced Management. This is a network of 32 schools and six continents um, that started in 2012. And through this network, we've been able to greatly expand the options within our global studies requirement. So Yale was the first school to require global studies. It's now quite common. Um, so we still have that requirement. You can fulfill it in one of five different platforms. Each of these platforms has numerous offerings each year. So long story short, our students have somewhere between 50 to 60 global courses to choose from each year. Um, to give you an example, um, international experience, number one that you see on the slide, um, we refer to this as IE. Um, the past year, students had eight different um, choices within that experience. And those trips took our students to the Balkans, China, India, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Peru, and South Africa. Um, if you look at item number two, Global Network Weeks, this is where our students can take a course, a one-week course at a Global Network school. So um, whereas in option one, you're traveling the world with a Yale faculty member and your, your Yale peers, in option number two, you go to another university with the network, you're taught by their faculty, um, and you're taught in a, in a topic that is within their wheelhouse, we'll say, at that institution. And the classroom is truly made up of, of a global cohort. Um, this past October, so these trips are offered twice a year, October and March. And this past October, there were 13 different choices um, during that one week if you wanted to go on a global network week. Um, so I won't get too far in the weeds with these options, but I think um, you're getting a sense for the expansive opportunities for our students. And, and last but certainly not least, um, hopefully you're getting a sense for how Yale values connection and integration across campus and the world. At the heart of our leadership training is a very innovative and rigorous MBA core. And um, most MBA programs that you'll be researching have an MBA core that's taught in disciplines and in silos. So they take one, you know, finance, marketing, et cetera, and they, that's the name of the class. That's kind of a narrow focus for the class. And again, these classes are taught in silos. At Yale SOM, our MBA core is integrated, and we take on what we call the organizational perspectives courses. So what you're seeing here are actually the names of courses within our core, all of these courses you would be taking in the first year. And they're designed to enable you to be a leader who sees and understands things and issues from various lenses. Um, so for example, the lens of the investor, the customer, uh, 
the competitor, et cetera. And so this is a much more dynamic approach to a core curriculum. And within each of these 10 courses, you'll see those business disciplines. They're woven throughout the course. So for example, in sourcing and managing funds, you'll tackle finance, strategy, operations, and accounting. Um, this is a nice example too, because this class is actually co-taught. Um, it's team taught by two different faculty members. And uh, that's a feature of some of the core classes. In addition, uh, many case studies, and we'll talk about the raw case, um, are discussed across classes. So again, not within the bounds of just one class, but across classes. So I mentioned raw cases. Another nice example of our uh, leadership training is we do use traditional case studies, but we also have developed a case writing team. We've invested in this and we've developed what we call the raw case. So the information, the case is not fully baked. It's raw. Um, it's meant to replicate the way that we access and use information in the real world. Uh, it's a web-based platform providing uh, multimedia data and resources, items that are non-linear. It's a little bit messy. Um, we give you more information than you need to crack the case. And again, we think this is more reflective of how you'll be facing um, issues in, in the real world. And many of you already have a sense of that. So really quickly, um, I'd like to say a few words about the Yale SOM community. Um, and from my perspective, I've actually been at Yale SOM for seven years now, and I worked in higher education for my entire career, which is 21 years now. I've worked for five institutions, and Yale SOM truly is unique. Um, I see a community of bright, ambitious folks who genuinely take an interest in each other, uh, in each other's pursuits, careers, lives, families. Um, we have a smaller class size than some of our peers, so we bring in about 350 students a year. Um, we're purposefully small in that way. And um, the students who come to YSOM are tend to be very interested um, in collaboration, in taking classes outside of Yale SOM, um, in learning about their classmates' pursuits outside of the classroom. Let me give you an example. Um, there's a student-initiated event that happens every week at Yale. Um, it's called Voices. It happens every Monday night where one or two students take the podium and they share something about themselves, something personal. Maybe it's a story. Maybe talent. And um, they share something that you might not otherwise learn about them as a peer student. And what I think this signals is since it happens every week and there's usually a full house in the audience, I think it signals that, again, our students are interested in each other's pursuits, not only career-wise, but as people. Um, I think we appreciate diversity and different voices. And the fact that this happens once a week, I think it's also signaling that it's a safe and safe place where our students respect one another's differences, unique talents. Um, I can provide more examples, but what I would encourage you to do is to reach out to our community members. We have many ways in which you can do that. I'm certainly happy to guide you, um, but we do have student ambassadors. You can find their contact information directly on our website. Club leaders, the same. Um, right now, we're hosting summer socials. These are casual online events um, hosted by current students. There are no um, staff members on the call. So there are many ways in which you can engage with our current students and kind of hear um, anecdotes from them yourselves. Okay, so this is my last slide. I just wanted to share a little bit about the application. Um, you'll see here that our application deadlines and release dates are not yet, have not yet been announced. Um, but I can give you a general idea. I've been giving you the months in which we'll likely um, have application deadlines. At the top of the slide, you'll see the components of our application. Um, much of this will not be new to you. So what I will do is I will pull out um, three aspects of Actually, I'll just pull out two. We can talk about the interview if you'd like, but I'll pull out two aspects of our 
applications that are unique to Yale for the most part. Um, you'll see video questions on the right side of your screen. Um, after you complete your application and pay your application fee, you'll be given access to a platform where you answer three pre-recorded prompts. Um, you'll do this in the comfort of your own home as we do these days. Um, and, and this is not in place of an interview. It's not a screening. It was actually developed quite a number of years ago um, to better assess the language skills of our uh, international students, our non-native English speakers. Um, we, so therefore, you don't see a TOEFL or an IEL test requirement in the list of components, but you do see the video questions. But what they also do for us is they allow us to have a more three-dimensional um, picture of our candidates. We get to see and hear you, um, which is wonderful. And we get a sense for how you might think off the cuff or respond in a conversation should we get a question. Um, they really don't require any preparation. But what I would tell you to do if you'd like some advice is there is a tool that a practice tool that you can use in the platform and you can practice as many times as you want before you go live so i would encourage you to utilize that um, also know that after you see the question you will have 20 seconds to gather your thoughts maybe jot down a couple notes before you're recorded giving your response and the response is 60 to 90 seconds long um, so know that we really want you to shine we're trying to set you up for success in this particular application the other thing I'd like to draw out is the behavioral assessment. So this will be our second year formally using the behavioral assessment in the application process. And this is an online non-cognitive admissions tool. Um, and it's administered by the research division of ETS, the maker of uh, the GRE. And it's intended to measure a set of inter and intrapersonal competencies associated with academic success in an MBA program. Um, so there's, again, nothing you need to do to prepare. It will take about 20 minutes to complete. It's a forced choice module. Um, and it doesn't require any special, special knowledge or preparation. So um, what this allows us to do is, you know, we're very interested at SOM in exploring different ways of evaluating candidates beyond the traditional metrics, such as, you know, standardized testing. Um, and so this very much complements your academic profile, your transcripts and your test scores. Because again, it does measure your ability to be successful academically at Yale. Um, and so it allows us to better evaluate in a more holistic way candidates who might not have the strongest academics or test scores, but who nonetheless have what it takes to succeed at Yale and to contribute to our community. So with that, go to my last slide here and I'm gonna to toggle back to see you. Can you see and hear me okay? I can see and hear you, great. Awesome, so thank you so much for the presentation. I'm gonna to toggle to just the two of us so it's easier for us to do sure. questions. So we have a ton of questions. I will try to um, streamline them so it goes from admissions and you know pre MBA, then during MBA, and then post MBA. Does that sound good? Sure, sounds good. Awesome. So getting a lot of questions about um, Yale you know, um, SOM admissions. So two specific questions. Uh, number one is what are some of the specific traits and qualities that you look for in an applicant? Mm -hmm. And um, and then dovetailing off of that, um, of all the elements in the Yale SRM application, there are two sort of unique ones that stand out. The number one is the video essay, um, and number two is the behavioral assessment. Mm -hmm. So if you could talk to us a little bit more about that, the purposes of those, and generally how to prep for those, if you should prep for them at all. Um, yeah, so those are the first two questions to start us off with. Yeah, I, I think I just answered, I hope I just answered the question that you have about video questions, behavioral assessment. Um, for both, there's really no need to prep. Um, uh -huh. The video questions, you know, it's meant to be kind of off the cuff uh, response to a typical behavioral um, right. interview type question. You know, what is your favorite color and why? Um, mm -hmm. Here's a, a famous quote, how do you feel about it? 
you agree, do you disagree, why? Um, the best way to prepare is to really just use the practice. So you're, you're given as much time as you'd like within that platform to practice um, answering prompts, you know, using the right buttons, ending your video, et cetera. Um, and then behavioral assessment, um, likewise, there's, there's truly no prep um, for this. You'll be given a, again, a 20 minute course choice module um, where you'll have two phrases and you select the one that you most identify with. Right. And that's, that's it. So no preparation. Um, but again, with the behavioral assessment, we're really looking for ways to help evaluate candidates in a more holistic way um, and exploring things outside the traditional metrics like standardized testing, for mm -hmm. example. Awesome. So going back to when you select candidates uh, mm -hmm. to be a part of the class and the profile, what are some of the specific or unique things that people um, should have to, that you're looking for? And I'm, I fully understand that I'm asking for a episode <laughs> of some sort here. So, so, but yeah, anything that you could share with us, that'll be really helpful. Um, we could also think of it as what, what sort so, sort of set someone who goes to Yale and who got accepted at Yale uh, apart from any other business school? Yeah, so it's a great question. We get asked that question a lot, as you could imagine. Mm -hmm. um, the beauty of working in a business school and a business school like Yale is I'm not looking at the same profile over and over and over again. This is not a nursing school. Everyone wants to go into nursing. You know, they have very similar backgrounds or a very similar path forward. Um, at a business like Yale, the um, students are, are coming from across the globe. Their experiences are diverse. Um, some are very much expected, some are very much unique. Um, and they go off and do really cool things as right. well. So in looking for what makes a student interesting or what makes them rise, um, the first thing is we really try to assess their academic performance, so they're typically high academic performers, and then also we're looking for strong performers in their work experience. Right. So, so that's kind of the foundation, right? And then uh, we're also trying to assess their ability to lead. Um, and you know, this program and its core is about training leaders, um, specifically for business and society. So we try to tease those things out. The, the, the third piece is obviously harder. Um, then beyond that, candidates rise for various reasons. Um, you might have someone who has really unique work experience. Maybe they work for a small firm or a startup. They've worn a lot of hats. Uh, maybe they've, they've experienced a merger or an acquisition. Uh, maybe they've been laid off. Um, they might have a really unique challenge or story or accomplishment. Um, we might have a candidate rises because Although they've done something very narrow, they've done it really, really well, let's say in finance for a number of years. Um, and so they find that very interesting. Um, I find personally, as an admissions committee member, I often lean heavily on the recommenders. Right. So I'm going to jump forward a little bit here and answer a very typical yeah. question, which is, you know, what piece of the application would you encourage to really focus in on? And um, you might be surprised by my answer, which is the recommendations. Um, for the most part, they're out of your control, right? You don't write them, right. um, but I do think you can influence your recommendations or your recommenders. So I encourage candidates to make time uh, in advance, give your, your recommenders plenty of time, but, but sit down with them if you can in, in person or maybe online, have a cup of coffee and talk about why you're pursuing an MBA, uh, why Yale, and and nudge them on some things, remind them of experiences you've had, maybe a stretch project or um, an accomplishment or um, you know, a story that you think provides real insight to your performance and your potential mm. and ask if they might feel comfortable expanding upon um, that particular experience. You can really nudge them and prep them to write a great recommendation because um, Sadly, most recommendations, or I should say many recommendations, aren't that helpful to the committee. Uh, recommenders say, she's great. We'd love to have her back. She's a hard worker. She's a strong performer. We'd love to have her back. <laughs> well, great. I mean, I hope so. That's good. You know, that's good news. I hope so. But tell me something more. Um, because right. we still have humans who sit around a committee table and read files and advocate 
on your behalf. And so if I have a story that a recommender has shared or some insight that I can go to the table with, hmm. um, that's very helpful. Awesome. Um, so more questions uh, in and around admissions, but I'm, I also want to ask you questions about the MBA experience. Sure. So um, I'm getting a question around Yale SOM's uh, reputation of um, really bringing focus to social impact. Mm -hmm. uh, so for candidates without a social impact background or, you know, candidates who have been truly busy to engage in their community in a really meaningful way, how can they um, set themselves apart to be considered by the SOM admissions team? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you don't need to set yourself apart. You just need to be yourself. I know that that many candidates hear that and they find it hard to believe, <laughs> but it's the truth. Um, we are a mission-driven school. Many of our candidates come from a space or have experience um, you know, in volunteer work and social right. work, et cetera, but most do not. Most do not. And then on the back end, um, we're known as, as having graduates who go into the nonprofit social impact space, but it's still about five to 7% year after year. It's still a pretty small slice overall. Mm. Um, it's certainly within our DNA. It's certainly within our mission. We certainly have an incredible alumni network for that space. Um, but most students do pursue traditional paths on the right. back. So finance and consulting. Um, and so what we're looking for in candidates is not how much volunteer work um, you, you've contributed to in the past few years, or um, we're, we're really looking to, to know that you're a high performer in what you do and that you're a broad thinker. So let me give you an example. Um, mm -hmm. Finance is number two on outcomes here at ELSOM. It's similar to many business schools. Um, what I noticed in our students who go into banking is they might also sit on a board, on a nonprofit board. Um, they might also join, while they're at Yale SOM, they might join clubs that are outside the scope that you would traditionally think of as a banker being interested in. Um, and so, again, that broad thinker piece comes in. Um, so we do look for that in the application process as well. Um, the interest and um, understanding of how you can have an impact, even as a banker right. uh, or, any, or, or an educator, um, or healthcare worker or lawyer uh, in your in your community. Awesome. So getting a ton of questions about the Silver Scholars program, right? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, so number one, a Silver Scholar class and how do you really pick Silver Scholars and are the admission standards or uh, the attributes different than the regular admission where people have more ex more work experience? And second, with the extended deadlines, does that apply to Silver Scholars as well? Uh, mm -hmm. And are there any changes, uh, thanks to the situation that we are in, uh, for the Silver Scholarship Program? Yeah, a lot of questions packed in there. Um, let me Sorry first, about that. <laughs> please, no, it's fine. You just have to remind me if I missed something. Um, no, I'll no. first say that we did add a, an additional round this year during the pandemic. That was round three extended. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're actually currently in committee today. I've stepped out um, to join you. Um, but but now our application is closed for the year. So we're making final offers in the next couple of weeks of a, a healthy wait list as well. Um, moving forward, we don't, we don't anticipate adding another round. So we'll have the traditional one, two, three rounds. And those are the same for Silver Scholars. So let me back up and, and first explain what the Silver Scholars program is. Sounds good. Um, so the Silver Scholars program at Yale is a pathway to the full-time MBA for students coming right out of their undergrad experience. So they have no full-time work experience. Um, you would apply during your senior year of undergrad, and you would start the MBA program with everyone else, um, the more, let's say, traditional students who have, on average, five years of work experience. So you all come together in orientation, in career immersion, all that good stuff start the program together, you move through the core together. So there's no difference in the application process or the first year experience. The one difference happens in the summer. So our traditional students, our non-silver scholars in the MBA program, um, they, they go away for an internship, a summer long internship 
whereas our Silver Scholars complete a year-long internship. Mm. Uh, and then they come back for their second year of the program, which is now their third year uh, with us. Okay, right. so it ends up being a three-year program. The curriculum is the same. The application is the same. It's that internship piece that's different. Instead of a sm summer, it's a year-long experience. Um, you did ask a question about uh, what we're looking for, what's different yeah. with candidates in our evaluation. So with Silver Scholars, they, they oftentimes will have internships, uh, maybe research, very interesting things are involved in an undergrad. We have to lean on that quite a bit, as well as their academic performance, because we, they don't have full-time work experience. Um, so they, they do have to be exceptionally strong students. Um, and the other thing we're looking for is a level of maturity and awareness um, to make sure that this early career person um, is ready to contribute and have a voice um, and be a sponge in our classroom and in our community. Got it. So, so yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense because uh, I don't hear a lot about um, undergraduate internships and research being into uh, being one of the several key factors for full-time MBA admissions, but um, that's, right. uh, that's interesting how Silver Scholars that becomes more into the focus. So stepping onto the MBA experience overall, and you mentioned this on one of your slides about joint degrees and dual degree programs uh, with ELSOM. Mm -hmm. so getting questions around what are some of the most popular dual degree options that we have seen students pursue? Mm -hmm. and Again, I I do have an annoying habit of stacking questions on top of each other, so <laughs> sorry about that. But, it's a good uh, challenge. I like it. That's great. <laughs> how does um, a dual degree help in more niche or specific recruiting goals? So as I mentioned, we have 10 joint degree programs offered, mm -hmm. um, and it used to be nine, and we've most recently added the asset management your MBA and an MMS in asset management, um, which is a really exciting opportunity, um, again, for early career, primarily early career candidates. Um, to answer your question about which are the most popular or um, we see more students executing, um, the School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, for sure, year right. after year. Uh, we have a lot of students interested in sustainability and the environment, and coupling that with leadership training and business education. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, we also see a number of students in the law school. Mm. Um, and so um, that tends to be quite common. Um, the School of Public Health, uh, we also see a healthy number of students who want to work in public health and healthcare and also want the business um, fundamentals and leadership experience. Um, a handful in architecture, drama, medicine, mm -hmm. etc. But I would say the top two uh, are probably forestry and law. Right, awesome. Um, I'm getting more admission questions, but I'm gonna leave them <laughs> for the end to stay the MBA course. Sure. Uh, you mentioned that uh, finance uh, ended up being number two on mm -hmm. most popular post MBA paths that students take. So mm -hmm. we'd love to learn a little bit more around the, what kind of employers uh, are the most um, prevalent on campus? What do you see, uh, see students go in after their MBA? And is there any specific trends that you're seeing in the last couple of years in selecting post MBA employers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have a really incredible career development office. Mm -hmm. um, they're both inward and outward facing. They um, we have an, a staff that's able to meet with candidates one to one. I think last year we had. 1900 individual counseling session with our right. career development office. Um, we also have an incredible group of clubs, both personal, I'm sorry, uh, professional and social, finance club being one of them. Um, and our alumni are all um, available to bolster students' pursuits in any career path. The finance is very lockstep. It's a very formal recruiting process. So you really do start from day one um, as you arrive on campus. Um, and so you you were asking about the employers, all the names you could imagine, um, the big banks, areas, and you know, and asset management. Um, mm -hmm. So so if you look at our faculty and also some of the outcomes, all on our website. I think we list the top twenty employers on our website, and we have a 
very robust career um, outcomes report that you can click through um, and get the actual numbers. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're in a really wonderful location in the sense that we're trained right away from New York City, um, as well as our alums in New York City, a train ride from Boston and DC. So um, we don't hold class on Fridays, the classes are Monday through Thursday. And so oftentimes our finance professionals or folks who are looking to pivot into finance, they're on the train Friday morning, um, and they're networking, and, um, they're interviewing and things like that. Great. So last question on MBA, then I'm going to move to a few other admission questions because they've been just pouring in. So okay. If you could list out three specific things that sets the Yale SOM MBA experience apart from peer programs, mm -hmm. what would they be? And we don't need like a ton of details, but three things off the top of your head would be great. Yeah, I think most schools will start with their community. I'm not going to. <laughs> it's, the community is very important. It is very unique. Come explore it for yourself. I think at this stage, and I'm assuming many of your candidates are in early stage, top of the funnel, uh, research, uh, I would encourage you to look at school offerings within the curriculum, okay? Um, and in my presentation, I cover three things that make Yale so very distinct from other top MBA programs. The first is the integration with Yale University mm -hmm. um, and, and having access to sharpest minds in academia and the resources of Yale. Um, speakers, conferences, faculty. Um, it's, an, it's an incredible place to be for two years. And you'd be remiss if you spent all of your time just in the School of Management and take advantage of the opportunity. Uh, the second aspect is the global aspect. Um, our students have an incredible array of opportunities to study abroad. Actually, most of our students go abroad two to three times in their two year experience. And the, they're, if you remember, there was a slide with five different platforms, so five different yeah. types of global study within each um, are numerous offerings. So that's very unique to get. Um, and then the last piece is really about the MBA core. Um, so our core curriculum is, is entirely different from other business schools. We take on stakeholder perspectives um, and we integrate disciplines rather than taking a siloed approach. Right. Um, so I said that those three things really make our program distinctive. Um, and of course, the community, I, I could speak for hours about the community, um, but I encourage students to, to connect um, with community members themselves. Awesome. Almost reaching the end of the session, but I'm, I'm going to try to squeeze a few application yeah. questions in. So one question, uh, I'm going to paraphrase this, but the question is, have you seen, uh, can you talk us, can, can you talk us through some examples of where you had really good applications sort of sabotage themselves for any specific reasons. If you had to ask prospective students to not do one thing on their application, what would that be? Mm. Um, two things to avoid. Um, the first, not having an authentic voice, not being yourself. Um, many candidates will see will try to tell us what they think we want to hear. So you mentioned the social piece. Some students yeah. will try to talk long and hard about their, their social um, experience or ambitions. And it's really actually not that big of a priority to them, but they think it is for us. So they try to fit into kind of a box. Um, and you know, having done this for 12 years now, yeah. essays, interviews and reading recommendations, I can kind of tease out if you're, if you're being honest. <laughs> So I would say, you know, this is a large investment of your time and money. Be your authentic self and you stand at a place that speaks to you and that will propel you forward. Um, and, and know that there isn't one profile or one box um, that you want to squeeze yourself into uh, to be uh, attractive to Yale. Like I said mm -hmm. earlier, there are so many reasons why candidates rise. And we need a diverse student body. We want to student body um, to achieve the goals that we have. So be yourself. The other thing I would encourage you to do is answer the questions asked. Um, and again, it might seem obvious, but you'd be shocked um, how many candidates will kind of shoehorn an essay for one school into another. Um, sure. We realize the application process um, can be a challenge. Uh, just 
time wise, making time, you're writing a handful, if not more, essays. But if we ask an essay prompt that's specific to us for a specific reason, we really yeah. want you to answer the question asked. We actually only ask one essay question. I don't know if, if they can't notice that on the slide. Um, we do not ask why Yale. Everything in our application, we only ask things that we will evaluate the candidate upon. We are not right. evaluating you based on your love of Yale. <laughs> if you apply to Yale, we assume you want to be here. So check, that's done. Um, but we ask all of our questions for very specific reasons. So um, in conclusion, answer the question best. Awesome. So that was pretty much it for our questions. Uh, well, thank you so much for being here. This was great. We learned a lot about the SOM program. And also, we learned a lot about what you're looking for in both uh, full-time MBA silver scholars and other elements of the application. If you had to leave uh, the audience with one thought before they apply to um, SOM, what would that be? Mm. It's a good question. I would just, I would say kudos to you um, for being here, for doing your research, for listening, for learning, for asking questions. Um, this really should be a journey. It should be um, a time of reflection because mm -hmm. as I said, it's a large investment of time and money. Um, so I would just, it can be stressful at times, remind to stop and take a breath and pat yourself on the back for all the steps you're taking towards um, your MBA, and uh, and I wish you all the best in the journey. Awesome. Well, thank you, Kristen, so much for spending your time with us here today. We had a ton of people, as you saw, from all over the place, uh, and I'm sure everybody um, is a lot more informed applying to Yale uh, now that they have heard from you. Thank you so much thank for you. joining. If I, if I could mention one thing for your audience yeah. before you leave, if you go Absolutely. to our website, we're actually hosting, you know, I've, I kind of didn't talk much about our community. Next mm. week, uh, Bruce Del Monaco, our assistant dean for admissions, is hosting a student panel, two current students and two alumni. And the event is very much focused on um, the community and the student experience. And you can attend live and ask questions live, similar to what you've done here today. Um, so I'd encourage candidates to um, join us for that event if they'd like to continue. Awesome. Yeah, no, that'll be great. Um, I will make sure to update the video with a link if you have one. And uh, sure. yeah, thank you, Christian, so much for joining. And I'll hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Thanks.